everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. Today we're going to be turning these boring canvases into some funny bathroom signs. So grab your tools and supplies. You'll find the list down below this video and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start off with some canvas. Uh, these were purchased through Michaels and they came in a big pack. However, nowadays uh, you can find them even at the Dollar Tree or Dollar 25 Tree as my kids like to point out. Um, and unwrapping them obviously we're going to have to take the canvas off the frame and we're going to reverse it. I started out by trying to take the staples off pulling them completely off the frame but it did not work for me and so I decided to cut around the staples making sure that I don't hit any and I did um, no big deal but your blade will definitely dull one thing I do want to point out is the fact that the canvas is thick and there is also a thick layer of paint um, on top of it so you have to use some pressure in order to cut through those two layers and of course the corners being folded over are much harder to do so but just take your time and do it slowly making sure you don't cut your fingers that's what I was worried about doing the whole project because I am not very still with the knife my corners definitely needed some extra knife help and I was desperately trying to pull any excess canvas away from the frame so when I flipped it over and tried to put it on the wall that wouldn't be sticking out too much definite sign of relief when I was able to pull the whole frame away from the canvas without bending it any yay finally next step we're going to weed our designs um, I'm just gonna show you guys just the one you can either leave it on the mat or take your HTV off the mat I like to cut my design off of the sheet so that way I can maneuver it a lot easier As a side note, I just wanted to let you guys know that I did cut all three of my designs on one mat, but um, somehow this portion of the video did not get recorded and I wanted to make sure I showed you uh, mainly the pressing process, not so much the weeding. And um, that's why I decided to recut one of the designs. and. I will be able to put this in one of my other bathrooms or gift it to someone else in my family. Now I know that most people are not crazy about weeding. I am a little bit different because I enjoy weeding. I do like to see the progress and then the final design show through. Um, I like to pick up my design especially whenever it is HTV and you can see the back because it is much easier for me to tell which portions I have weeded already and what still needs to be done. This would be a perfect time to use your bright pad if you have one. There are many tools that you can use to weed vinyl my favorite is the pin pen just because it is able to get into those tiny spaces I guess you like to use what you learn on that's what I used whenever I was learning how to 
craft and it's much easier for me to maneuver, especially the little, little pieces. I like to just poke them and lift them straight up. Um, and I cannot do that with the Cricut hook weeding tool. Obviously, I have to go back several times and take a look at the design, making sure that I did weed all the little bits and pieces, and I didn't. And there have been times before where I have ironed them on. Um, good thing about HTV is if it's still really warm, you're able to go in with some tweezers a lot of times and pull the pieces off if you notice them. Not always, but most of the time. Our next step is to trim our canvas so it's a bit smaller than the outside of the frame and we can't see it once it's on the wall and look like a hot mess. So once you trace it with a pencil, make sure that you cut to the inside line that you had just made. Just a quick measurement, making sure that it's actually going to fit inside of the frame. We're going to grab our heat pad and try to line it up on the heat pad itself so we don't move it over and over again. So far, so good. All right, in the meantime, we have heated up our heat press to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to press it for 25 seconds, putting like gentle pressure on it. Although I do love my Cricut heat presses, I have three of them and the mini. I find it a little bit cumbersome to do anything more than a light pressure. I'm always afraid that I'm going to shift the image or worse yet, I'm going to burn myself. So I try not to um, maneuver it too much. This is a cool peel HTV, so you see me trying to cool off my image a little bit so I can go ahead and peel it. And you don't want to do that on the heat mat because it's specifically designed to keep the heat in order to help you press on it. Um, so moving it onto a different flat surface or just waving it a little bit in the air definitely helps out. And a second press is definitely recommended just to make sure that the image is adhered to whatever surface you put, you're putting it on. Um, usually not the whole 25 seconds, half time, about 10 15 seconds is great. And look how adorable it looks already. Um, when you look at it up close, you can actually see the texture of our canvas coming through, which tells me that the image has transferred perfectly. While I was waiting for my Cricut to cut out my images, I stained my frames the same, same color as my doors. 
So now I'm just putting a bead of hot glue on the very inside edge of the frames. So that way if I want to trim any of the canvas from the outside, I won't cut the glue and my image will stay still. As I'm trying to navigate the hot glue gun, it is definitely stringing everywhere, all over the place. And I'm trying not to make a hot mess and glue everything together. Now if you're a perfectionist, then you definitely want to measure things out and mark wherever it's supposed to go so it's 100% for you. I mainly eye things. Um, I don't mind if they're a bit off. It's not going to bother me and it definitely is not going to bother anyone in my family. So eyeing it works perfectly fine for me and I just go with it. These little signs are so adorable. I downloaded these SVGs from Creative Fabrica and they came in a bundle of I believe 26. And I will be linking that down below just in case you want to use something similar to that. Or maybe perhaps even the same ones. So as you can tell, I have a little bit of the white poking through underneath the frame. This is exactly the reason why I was trying to put the glue really close to the inside edge of the frame. So that way uh, later on I could go back and trim whatever I needed to with my true control knife. Right, guys that will be all for today if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you have not done so already please consider subscribing to my channel don't forget to hit the notification bell to get future notices of videos coming out and we'll see you on the next one bye for now